Welcome, welcome, welcome. Before we even get started, I just want to say I am so appreciative because I know you are busy working in your firm, serving your clients, doing the things to be operational, and that you took time away from working in your business to join us today to work on your business, getting an insight, a tip, something you can immediately implement as we wrap up today to really raise the bar as far as services that you offer and the quality of clients that you engage. Today's topic is how firm owners price with confidence to earn more and work less. Okay, if you find that you are experiencing burnout, low motivation, overwhelm, then I see that as a symptom of what I call an upper limit challenge. An upper limit challenge is when you have connected your fees to time. So when your time's maxed out, it means that you've capped your earning potential as well. And that is something I am on a mission to fix and resolve for firm owners because what you do is so important and valuable and we need to really connect your fees to the value of the difference that you make for your clients. So if you're feeling that burnout, overwhelm, or lack of motivation, then it's probably because you're still charging for your time instead of the value of your services. Okay, do you feel that there are times that you're doing work and you're not even invoicing for it or getting compensated for it. You're doing it, but in, there's no compensation whatsoever. So it's like working for free. Or possibly those legacy clients that have been with you from the very beginning still are at their old fees. They haven't had a fee increase forever because you don't want to rock the boat. You want to just leave good enough alone. Or maybe... Some of your clients, the scope of work has expanded because their business has grown, but your fees remain the same, even though your workload has increased. If any of those things apply to you, then you are absolutely in the right place today. Steve, go ahead and introduce yourself. Great. Now that you guys can hear me, I can go introduce. So hi, my name is Steve Fogelman. As you can see by the last name, Lauren and I are related. We have been life partners and business partners for many years. I'm going to be your co-host. I'll be working the chat. And if you have any questions, please go ahead and put them in the chat when we're doing our polls. And I'll be able to get those questions over to Lauren. Um, I'm a therapist turned business coach. And I'm going to turn it back over to you. Thank you. Uh, a little bit about me, if you're meeting me for the first time, is that I'm a sports psychologist turned business coach. And what I have realized is that our education gives us all the tools and skill sets to do what we do really, really well, but it also prepares us to be an employee working for someone else instead of a business owner. And because of that, there's usually three gaps that we need to figure out in order to really have a business that we run instead of a business that runs us. And the very first one is communicating our value so that we attract those right clients to us. The second one is about how to be able to separate your fees from time in order to be able to price your services correctly and not end up with that upper limit challenge. And the third one is how do you enroll clients when you don't want to be salesy? You don't want to push or pressure someone into working with you, but you need clients in order to have a business. And those are three things that I found accounting firm owners can benefit as well is knowing how to communicate value, how to price your services, and also how to enroll clients into working with you when you don't like the sales part. And as you can see, I have been listed as one of the top 22 business coaches by HubSpot. Now, from my research, and I'm probably being generous with this, 57% of firm owners undercharge for their services. And a lot of that has to do with how we look at value, how we look at our time, how we are calculating things in what feels like a formula. But overall, I would say at least 57% of firm owners undercharge for their services. And it is just time to correct that. What we're going to cover today is time and money, looking at pricing secrets and five steps to price with confidence. I, I want to let you know that I will give you as much as I possibly can in our short period of time together. And if you want to have a further conversation, know how to apply this into your firm. I will show you how to do that as we wrap up. But also, if you have questions as we're 
going through the webinar, there will be opportunities to let us know what your questions are, to be able to ask your question so that I can give you exactly what you need so you can start to really increase your rates and get paid fees that reflect the value of services that you deliver. Well, Lauren, what are the steps to increase income without working additional hours? This is right from the raise your rates formula that I teach my clients. And even if you just take the essence of it, you'll be able to start to implement it and see some results. So the very first one is understanding high value clients, because in the beginning, you take that wide range of clients from low value to high value, and you end up with a mix. But what we realize is that some clients are a joy to work with and others just give you headaches. We want to have more of those quality clients. That means being very aware of what are some of the qualities of those clients, what is it that they care about, and how to be able to attract those right clients to us. And that goes right into number two, is communicating your value. That's like the client attraction piece. Knowing the right words, whether it's on your website, your pro-advisor profile, when you're at a meeting and someone asks you what you do, how do you have those right words that grab attention as opposed to blending in and sounding like everybody else that does something similar to you? Number three is packaging your services. This is when I go on the website of a firm and I'm looking at their services page and I see this long laundry list of all the different a la carte things that they can do. Well, most of your clients don't understand what all those things are, especially the AR, the AP. They, they just don't really understand it to the degree that you do. So they don't realize that they can benefit from those services you might offer. What we want to do is start to get away from that a la carte menu into packages where you're bundling certain services together that would benefit a client based on the size of their business or where they are in their growth evolution and that it is outcome focused. That is the way to start separating your fees and time. And that goes right into number four, which is what we're looking at today, taking that deep dive is value pricing. With most price strategies, you're pricing your time, your course, maybe a little bit of profit margin. And that those are the things that are important to you. But value pricing prices the client and looks at what's important to the client and then sets fees according to that value that the client has as opposed to your value. And then number five is consultation mastery. If you're having those initial consultations and you're looking to enroll new clients into your firm that see the value of working with you, they aren't price sensitive, then you want to have what I call a value conversation instead of a sales pitch. Because let's face it, your clients don't want to be pitched and you don't want to do the pitching either. So this is where you want to be asking great questions. They see the value of working with you naturally without having to sell yourself. And at the end of the conversation, they're naturally asking, how do we move forward? So those are the five steps of the raise your rates formula is high value client, communicate your value, package your services, value pricing, and consultation mastery. Well, it's great, Lauren. We're going to go ahead and get started with time and money. But before we do that, we have our first poll question. And rate your pricing confidence. I'm highly satisfied with my rates. I'm afraid to raise my rates. I get paid a little and I work a lot. Once again, rate your pricing confidence. Highly satisfied with my rates. Afraid to raise my rates. I get paid a little and I work a lot. And like I said, this is a great time. If you do have a question for Lauren, please go ahead and put that into the chat. And I will be sure to get that question over to Lauren so that she can answer it during our poll questions. And I think we're pretty close, Lauren. You want to close okay, it so out? Okay, so we'll go ahead and close it. Okay. Can you see the results, Steve? No. You okay. can read them. There oh, you there go. They go. So rate your price and confidence. Highly satisfied with my rates, 18%. Afraid to raise my rates, 27%. I get paid a little and I work a lot. Wow, 55%. Okay, we got some work to do, Lauren. We, we are on a mission. <laughs> so there's so much to consider when pricing your services. What's some of the biggest hurdles that come up? Okay, I want to just ask in the chat, and please go ahead with um, letting me know what's your biggest hurdle. And I'm just putting that in there. with pricing. 
So what's your biggest hurdle with pricing? I would love to hear from you. And what I have seen, whether it is someone who is a solo firm owner or all the way up to the big four, is that you have to think about it before you actually do it. So that, that means that as you're thinking about it, there might be some doubts or anxieties that, that come up. If you want to share whatever doubts or anxieties you might have or that you think most people have with pricing, please let us know in the chat as well. I love it when people are interactive in the chat. Um, so Christian says, uh, some of the things is pricing for value, not for time. Anybody else? Um, Alicia says, imposter syndrome. Am I really worth that much? Oh my gosh, you must have read my notes today. Um, so I'll talk about that in about one moment. Uh, anybody else want to put in there what it is that comes up for you when you're looking at raising your fees and charging more? Uh, but I want to just say spot on with Christian and Alicia is that first of all, we're taught to go ahead and charge for our time. I'll go into that in a moment. I was saying clients really grip when I even raise it $5. Um, so that might be how you're positioning conversation. Not everybody is price sensitive. Michelle said it's hard to articulate the value. Uh, I want to just say all those things are what keeps us from raising our rates is that it is what is in our heads. The thoughts, the worries, the doubts. Nobody wants pushback or to be challenged on why you're doing a fee increase. You might be questioning, am I really worth that much? As we were talking about with the imposter syndrome, I simply want to say you are in good company. Research has shown that 75% of people at some point will be facing imposter syndrome of who am I to do that? I don't have enough credentials, qualifications, years in the field, years as a business owner. And those things make us doubt ourselves, even though you are probably more than qualified. The other thing about imposter syndrome is that it tends to be something that high achieving women experience. And, it, and it's something that men experience too, but it tends to be more for high achieving women that they tend to at some point in their career experience imposter syndrome. And I simply wanna say that even though that might be what you're feeling, it might be an illusion and you really are much more qualified than you're giving yourself credit for. So then you wanna look for evidence of where am I qualified that can justify that? Because if you're thinking about raising your rates, then I know that you're more than qualified to actually do it. It's just that there are some things maybe that are holding you back, whether it's the mindset, the strategy, or the exact action step. And once you have those things, then it's usually easier to follow through and do that. Uh, Patricia says she's nervous to raise because lots of her clients have been with her a while and have low prices. Marilyn says she's afraid she won't get clients. All those things are accurate. So I really appreciate you joining me on the conversation and sharing those thoughts in the chat. Steve, was there anything that I missed? No, oh, I think you heard quite a bit. Uh, okay, okay. Just want to ch check yeah, it out with you. I'll, so thank you. I'll let you know. Okay. So something so, to think about. You want to go for it? Yeah. Accounting professionals are hard workers. We know that, especially looking at the chat, the hourly rate remains the most common way to price your services. Let's talk about pricing and that hourly rate. I want to say the reason that this is so epidemic that we as business owners continue to tie our fees to our time is because that's what we learned in the workplace when we first started out. Either we got an hourly rate starting out working for somebody else, or even if it was a salary, it was still somewhat tied to time and expectations. So that is why we end up usually charging an hourly rate in the beginning is because that's how we earn money when we first started out in the workforce. And the thing about an hourly rate that is a pro, it feels like a formula. And Let's look at it. Accounting professionals, formulas are something that make a difference. The more that you have processes, structure, formulas in your work, the easier things are. So it has the illusion of being easy. Uh, however, I know that when it comes to invoicing and collecting, sometimes that's where it gets really, really difficult. And having a 
hourly rate backfires. Now, the cons of it is that when you connect your fees of time, once again, you have that upper limit challenge. Once you've maxed out time, then you've maxed out your earning potential. But the other thing is that time isn't really where your value lies from a client's perspective. That's what matters to you. But your clients, they don't care about time at all. So when you charge for your time, you're actually leaving money on the table. And when we move to value pricing, you can actually earn two to three times more, no additional time spent working. And that is something I'll go into during the third section of today's uh, presentation. Well, first let's define price strategy. Then let's share how an accounting firm decides what strategy or pricing strategy is actually best. Okay. And what I want to know is um, really where are you in your price strategy? So what, what does that mean to you when we talk about price strategy? I would love to hear your input as what does price strategy actually mean? And a really simple way of looking at it is price strategy is how you price your service, but it's something that tends to evolve over time. In the beginning, most people are charging an hourly rate because as I said, that's how you were paid before. As you're starting up your firm, there's so many different things you, know, you need to do. You just stick with what you know and maybe your previous employer did. And it might be that you don't even realize that any other price strategies exist. So charging for your time feels like it is a sure thing. It's easy to calculate and it just helps you get started in the beginning. And then some people just stick with an hourly rate throughout their entire career. But then there's other firm owners that eventually move up to tier two, which would be a fixed rate. They're no longer calculating their time because they find they have some insights as to how long things should take at this point. And they just want to stop messing with tracking time. They don't like it anyway. They probably never do. And then they have to make it up before they send out the invoice. So they are now doing fixed fees because it feels easier and um, overall, if you average it out, you're probably, hopefully, making a profit. Uh, and, and there's less resistance and pushback. So there's some firm owners that go from the hourly rate, they go to fixed fees. And then there are some firm owners that take it to the third tier. And there are more and more doing it that because it's been talked about now for decades, um, beginning with Ron Baker back in the 80s or so. Um, so there's a lot more conversation about value pricing and value pricing is the third tier of pricing. And that is where you're pricing the client instead of pricing your time, your operational costs, and maybe a little bit of profit margin. This is where you're looking at what the value is to the client. And then you're coming up with fees based on that insight and value that the client gains from engaging your firm services. So those are the three different tiers. And like I said, the fact is that when you're pricing things based on your time and course, you're leaving money on the table, but it feels easier. It's what you've known and people like sticking with what's comfortable. Moving towards value pricing for some people needs handholding and that once they get the handholding and the insights of exactly how to do it in a way that feels genuine and authentic for them, then it works really, really well. And they can't believe that they didn't do it sooner. Well, what are some things to consider when setting your fees? Okay, these are the one, two, three things to consider. Uh, the very first thing is that I want your services to be profitable. And I'm not talking about a short 10, 20% margin. They should be very, very profitable where you end up with a firm that supports your quality life instead of one that sucks the life out of you. So we want your firm, your services to be highly profitable because I know the difference you are making for your clients when they have really solid financials and can make better decisions based on those. Number two is I want you to work with clients who appreciate you, respect you. They value what they what you offer. They're asking you questions. They come to meetings prepared and open-minded as opposed to the clients that are nitpicking. They want to have as much extras from you as possible, but they don't want to pay for it. 
or they don't answer or respond to your communications whatsoever. So we want you to have more of those quality clients because that puts you firmly on the road to having your dream firm. And then the last one is a win-win where everybody is happy with the fees because let's face it, when your fees are too low, your clients are really happy, but you get resentful because you have to make sacrifices in order to do the work for them and you're not compensated well for that difference that you're making and um, how they're probably treating you. So we wanna set fees where your clients are happy to pay it because they see the value and the benefits of engaging your firm services and you're happy to receive those fees because they you're being well paid for your services and they add to your quality of life. So that's the one, two, three is profit clients and win-win. When I first connected with Rod, he is he does taxes primarily, and he was working a lot, especially during tax season. Um, in fact, we joke about the fact that his wife is a tax season widow, where when it's tax season, he's not very available. And even when he is home, um, he's just exhausted and tired. So it's like um, he's not really in a marriage. At that time, he's married to his tax work. And he knew that it wasn't sustainable and that he was undercharging. He just didn't know how to fix it because he's a very nice guy. He wants people to be happy with his services. He likes saying yes to everything. But once again, his prices didn't reflect the value of services that he delivered and his years of expertise in the field doing this. So what we did is we focused on what it was that he does best how to be able to put it together in a way that it would be attractive to the right client and also he would be well paid for his services. This is what we did is we came up with his packages, which is the essentials, the advantage and the accelerator. I have permission to share it, but it is used for inspiration. Please do not copy it because this is proprietary to Rod. But once again, he thought about his clients and what they need and the essentials were really for the people that just needed the basics to be able to file their taxes on time and to remain compliant. The advantage were for people that were business owners, but they didn't have a very complex business model and they wanted some insights, but they didn't need a lot of insights because of where they were in their business or the type of business that they had. And then the accelerator were for people that maybe had multiple businesses, they had some real estate, and they had more complexity and wanted to have the strategy, the planning, and really the access to him so that they can make the best decisions possible regarding their tax advantage as they were moving forward and doing things to be able to be operational. So think about if you had something like this for you and your firm, how would that make a difference for you and your clients? Well, Lauren, let's move forward with pricing secrets. But before we do that, we have our next poll question. How do you charge your clients? Hourly rate, flat fee, value pricing combination. Once again, how do you charge your clients? Hourly rate, flat fee, value pricing, or a combination? And like I said, this is a great time. If you do have a question, please go ahead and put it into the chat. And uh, I'll be able to get those questions over to Lauren. And, and I just want to check in. Does anybody have any questions they either want to put in the chat or maybe they want to unmute themselves or something that's coming up for you or maybe something where you've been stuck, you need some clarity? Would love to be able to help that because if you ask your question, I know that we're serving somebody else here as well that probably mm -hmm. has it too. Right. Well, I do have a question that came in, Lauren. So what's the difference between fixed and value pricing? The, the difference between fixed and value pricing, well, the similarity is that they both are a set monthly fee. That is the similarity between the two. And the difference between fixed and value pricing is that fixed is being calculated based on your time, your course, and some profit margin. So those are the things that are valuable to you, whereas the value pricing is where you are going ahead and looking at what is of value to the client and you're pricing the services based on the client's value as opposed to your time and operational costs. Great, thank you. Yep, you wanna go ahead and, and make your Yeah, hourly, hourly rate is uh, zero, flat fee 20%, value pricing zero, and combination is 80%. Perfect. 
And, and Lauren, as we've talked about price strategies, the million dollar question, of course, is what to charge. It is a million dollar question. Um, and one, once again, I just want to say, no matter what size your firm is, single, big four, it is something that every single firm struggles with before they go ahead and make a difference to what um, to what they're charging their clients. And I know that that hourly rate, the fixed fee, when it's calculated based on time, feels logical. It feels like less of a risk. And that value pricing can challenge your limits. So what I'd like to do is put in the uh, chat box, what, what's your main question about value pricing? So what comes up for you when we talk, we're talking about it? Or maybe you've tried it and you feel that it didn't work for you. I, I would really like to get some insights so I can answer your question specifically. But what I want to say is that when you are thinking about, am I charging enough? You probably aren't. Let's go with that. And even though the fixed fee or the uh, hourly rate feels like it gives you some security, once again, you're then actually undercharging for your services because of the fact that um, when you're basing it on time, as you gain efficiency, then it doesn't take you as much time. So your clients end up getting a great deal and you end up working more hours in order to meet your revenue needs. So those are some of the challenges that come up when we start talking about how to price your services. Well, let's discuss value. What are some things that you want to consider when you're doing that? The very first thing that I want to put out there is it's important to look at ways to start connecting with your professional value. When you realize the difference you make for your clients, that starts to give you an awareness and it takes you out of your head about you and how you've done things differently. So I want to just know from you, how have you made a difference for your clients? What are some of the things that you've done that were really important or meaningful and your clients never would have had that if they wouldn't have engaged your firm? So once again, I'm going to put in the chat, how have you made a difference for your clients? And, and would love to hear that. So please go ahead and it's not bragging, it's inspiring all of us together when you share those ways that you've made a difference. So that's the first thing is you need to connect with that value and how you make a difference for somebody else. And that starts to really uh, open up the conversation towards charging more. And then the next thing you wanna look at is when you're meeting with clients, especially those legacy clients that you need to raise their fees and you haven't done it forever, and you know that it's time to just make that happen, that you want to have what I call that value conversation instead of pitching them and justifying why you're finally increasing their fees. What you want to do is ask questions that focus on them. What is it they want to achieve? What are some of the concerns where they can use some insights, uh, where they could use some support and why this is important? Um, how would things be different once they achieve those? That's some of the things that come up for me off the top of my head as I'm thinking about a value conversation are those questions that I just shared. But you want to focus on them and what is important to them and what it is that they want to achieve, why it matters, what would be different once they do that. And that starts to switch things around to that way, once you hear those insights, you can educate them about how you can help team up with them to achieve those outcomes. And once you do that, they really start to see you more as that consultant instead of a technician. And then the last part of the value formula is pricing for value and being able to price the client and what the value is to them of engaging your firm services instead of looking at how much time it's going to take you. So those are some of the things to think about with the value formula is professional value, value conversation, pricing for value. And Patricia said, as far as making a difference for clients, uh, she educates new independent contractors about quarterly tax payments, which is so important. Uh, Christian says she provides insights behind the numbers, allows clients to get loans, support their business valuation, and get capital contributions, satisfy banks for bank bonding companies. And she showed clients how they can grow their business or take on bigger construction 
projects. So those are the things that really matter to your clients are these things right here, not what reports or not about looking at necessarily doing the AR and doing the work, but what's possible because you're on top of their invoicing with them and they're getting paid faster than if they didn't have you do it or they don't have as many write-offs. So that's where your value is. It's not about the task. It's about what's possible because you know how to do those tasks. Something to think about as uh, this has been part of my journey and, and I got this really clear learning lesson uh, was that so often effective and efficient are paired together. And usually we hear efficient first. We want to be faster, faster, faster. Um, and we are putting effective secondary. But I feel that we need to flip it. And I want you to do what is effective and then the efficiency will come later. And the way that I got this learning lesson was in the beginning, when I first started doing coaching back in 2009, I was working with a lot of different service-based business owners. And I was working with this painter. What we wanted to focus on is how to get his crew more efficient in order to be able to paint five houses a month instead of four houses a month, because over time, that would be significant to his earnings. And we, he was on site one day with his crew trying out the new strategy. And at the end of the day, uh, when he was on site, the homeowner drove up and the homeowner looks at the house, looks back at him with a strange look on his face. And the painter says, what's the matter? Don't you like the paint job? And the homeowner says, I love it, but I didn't ask to have my house painted. And this time it was the painter's turn to be curious and had that confused look. So he looked at his work order and realized the crew was supposed to be painting the house next door. This is a true story. I can't make it up. So this <laughs> crew was very efficient at doing the wrong thing because they painted the wrong house. And, and that's why I want to do what is effective first and flip it around and then do what's efficient. So I want to say that charging an hourly rate or charging for your time feels efficient, but it's not the most effective way to price for your services because you tend to either have that uh, upper limit challenge where you eventually have low motivation, overwhelm and burnout, or you're leaving money on the table because you're undercharging for your services and you don't know how to increase the rates of your clients, especially the legacy clients. So as we're thinking about that, then how do your clients view you as a technician or an expert? So let's go ahead and answer that um, in the chat. Do your clients see you as a technician or as an expert? And as we know, technicians are lower level workers. They're like the factory line workers in a larger factory or manufacturing plant. And then the experts are the people that have the offices with windows on the higher floors. So we want you to be positioned for uh, as being an expert for what you know about the numbers, that you understand the language of numbers, that because you're looking at the numbers for your clients, they end up having a financially stronger business than if they were making business decisions without any insights whatsoever. So think about that for you. If you're focusing primarily and clients see you as the technician, then you have lower value. If they see you as that expert, then there's a higher perceived value. And Patricia says for her, it varies. Some clients see her as a technician and there's a few that see her as an expert. So there's some things that you do that help to have clients see more in that expert position so that they're not as price sensitive when um, you're looking to have them invest in your services. Well, Lauren, let's talk about Susan and how she earned more once she stopped charging for her time. Focusing on the tasks is like selling the 10,000 nails to build a house instead of talking about the dream of home ownership. I, I think that that is a great insight. So we were talking about technician versus expert. And think about that. So if you were having a home built for you, 
You don't care about the 10,000 nails. You care about the fact that you're moving into a well-built home that is going to be really solid through all sorts of weather throughout the year. And that you're, uh, the GC, the construction person that you hired to do it, did a really good job. So think about that with you as a firm owner is that you, when you focus on selling the tasks and what you do, it's like selling the 10,000 nails to a new home. But what your clients really want is the dream of having a solid business house. So we want to focus more on you knowing how to do the work and the fact that you know what to do to be able to help them achieve that result instead of actually the work that you're doing that lets that result happen. And, and that's how to start thinking differently about what it is that you bring to the table is your clients want the dream of solid financials. They don't care about the tasks as much because they don't understand the financials to the same degree as you do. And, and that was true with Susan also when we first connected is that she was focusing more on the technical skills of what she was doing for her clients as opposed to focusing on her years of doing this and of being a business owner and really understanding how business operations work. So what we did is we looked at how to be able to follow the raise your rates formula of understanding what the value is from the client's perspective, how to be able to have those conversations, to be able to discuss the investment and then get paid in full before doing the work. And this is because Susan's an accounting professional, she keeps everything on a spreadsheet. And I want to bring your attention to cleanup number one. With that project, she would have charged $1,500. We had a quick conversation about the value from the client's point of view. And what we realized is how much they would be saving if they had accurate, up-to-date, real-time information regarding their financials when making certain decisions or negotiating contracts. And as a result of that, she ended up pricing that project for $7,900, no additional time spent working. Uh, she, when she went to speak with these clients about the project and the investment, she was shaking in her boots. She didn't like sales conversations anyway. She's a people pleaser and she doesn't like pushback. So this was very nerve wracking for her. But because it was a process, all she needed to do was ask the questions we outlined, discuss the investment in the way that we talked about, follow the exact script for asking for the payment before starting. And, and she did those things. And they said yes. And they paid it before she started doing the project. That gave her insights that her clients weren't quite as price sensitive as she thought she, they were. And as a result of that, she started raising the fees on projects and with her current clients as well. As you can see, over the past nine months, she increased revenues by an additional $56,000. But the other part that happened is she went from that upper limit challenge of seven days, 70 hour weeks down to three days a week, 20 hour weeks. So she increased her bank account and she also lightened up her workload because she was now working with a higher quality client. And that is possible for you too. You don't have to struggle with this. There is a way to make this happen for you. So Steve, go Lauren. On. Yeah, let's talk about the five steps to price with confidence. But before we do that, we have our next poll question. And this is about raising your rates. Uh, how often do you raise your rates? More than once per year, annually, less than once per year. Once again, how often do you raise your rates? More than once per year, annually, or less than once per year. And Lauren, I do have a question for you. Yeah. Who do you start with first? Do you start with the new clients or do you start with the current clients? Oh, you know what? I didn't launch the poll because I'm so excited about what we're talking about. So give me a second. <laughs> no problem. Okay, now it's launched. Well, I'm sorry, what was the question? Can you repeat that? <laughs> Who do you start with first? Do you start with new clients or do you start with your current clients? Mm -hmm. uh, it actually depends on you and your firm. If I would say 75% of my clients start with their new clients coming in because they're at, they have capacity for new clients and it's easy to get started with somebody who doesn't know what things were like before and is going to wonder why you're changing things. So if you have capacity for new clients, start with new clients and get more comfortable with the conversation and how this works before you go to your current clients. If you're at capacity and you're maxed out, 
then we want to go to your current clients and start having this conversation with them to get them up to your new fees and your new packages. And then as you have room or clients are coming in, then you can have that with new clients. So it depends on you and where you're at your firm. If you're at capacity, you start with your current clients. If you have room to grow, then you want to start with new clients coming in. Does anybody else have any questions? Okay, so let's go ahead and share, Steve. Sure, I'm waiting for it. Oh, sorry about that. Thank you. Uh, how often do you raise your rates? More than once per year, zero. Annually, 42%. Less than once per year is 58%. And, and Lauren, you know, before we get going into the next section, um, I know that you're, um, you have a free resource and I'm getting some private messages about how do they implement this value pricing? Why don't you put it in the chat and let's talk about it. Okay. I will absolutely do that. If you feel that you've been thinking about raising your rates for quite a while, especially with those legacy clients and you know that this is the time to start getting that done, then go ahead and grab my resource. It's at businesssuccesssolution.com forward slash raise. It's going to give you the formula to start looking at how to increase your fees, including with the legacy clients, how to have that value conversation. And as a result, you will start working with better clients. They'll respect you more and you'll start earning more uh, because of the fact that you'll be compensated well for the work that you're doing and the difference that you make. So, if that appeals to you, go to businesssuccesssolution.com forward slash raise, and you can get that free rate resource on how to raise your rates. Great. Well, Lauren, many of our clients, they want to earn more, but they're really unsure how to start. Uh, how do you lead with value and then emphasize your expertise? Uh, also, Patricia had a question. Patricia, do you want to unmute yourself for a moment? Yes. Hi, how are you doing? Okay, how are you? Excellent, thank you. So why don't you go ahead and ask your question? Yes, I was just wondering, because we're already in the new year and starting the, the tax season, is it too late to raise your rate um, for existing clients? Mm -hmm. Is that um, something we should have let them know like last year? No, you don't ha have you sent out your engagement letters yet? I have not then this is the perfect time to do that. Okay. Uh, so so what you want to do with your engagement letters is let them know that you're making some changes in your business model to be more client-centered. So you don't want to justify my increased fees. I haven't increased your rates for the last 20 years. And it's time for me to just do that. They, they don't care about those things. Uh, but in your uh, engagement letter, you want to go ahead and let them know that you're making some changes to your firm to be more client-centered. And if you want, you can include what the new fee will be for your clients there. Uh, if not, um, then you can just let them know that uh, along with that, we will be changing how we're pricing our services. Uh, so what feels that. more comfortable for you? Um, I, I like that we'll be changing some prices. and Okay. Yeah. And, and, and I'm going to share in this next section one other thing to think about, because I know that you probably have some clients that just wait till the very end, and they yes. expect you to still do the deadline anyway. Yes. I'm going to answer that in just a moment. So so pay attention. But um, Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Engagement letters out yet. This is the perfect time to let them know you're making some changes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Thanks for asking that. Okay. So anyway... Um, Steve, can you ask your question again? Sure. Uh, many of our clients want to earn more, but they're really unsure how to start. How do you lead with value and then emphasize your expertise? Uh, okay, thank you for that. Uh, the the mm -hmm. very first thing that you want to really look at is focusing more on what's important to your clients and why they benefit from engaging your firm services, how you can help them. And that is then about focus realizing what they care about. So you have to ask some common questions with them and get some insights. And then you wanna show them how you can help them achieve that result. And that applies to tax as well as bookkeeping. So think about what it is that would be important to them. Uh, for some clients, it might be peace of mind, 
For others, it might be increased revenue, increased profit margin, business development. So once again, think about that for them. Um, and, 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 and so I'm going to just put in the chat, what is the main problem that you solve for your clients? And, and that's what you want to be able to let them know that you can help them with is understanding what they care about and showing them how you can help them. So this starts to position you more as that consultant instead of just being seen as a technician that's doing after the fact work. Okay, so this right here, this answers Patricia's question also about the clients that tend to be late. I want you to think about pricing as being more fluid and flexible as opposed to stagnant. Uh, and the way to think that is looking at airlines and how they price you taking a flight. What they do is they have dynamic pricing, they have surge pricing. So dynamic pricing means that it changes all the time. And the other thing is surge pricing is where when there's higher demand, then the flight seats go up also. So what you want to do is look at how that can be applied to you because I know for myself, if I book out a vacation three months in advance, I can get really good rates on flights typically. But if I have to be at a meeting the next day and it's urgent, then I'm going to probably pay a premium price to be sitting in the last seat in the bulkhead in the middle in between two other people. And I'm going to be happy to be there because of the urgency of needing to get a ticket to be at that meeting. So think about that. That's true for your clients also. When we're doing 1099s or when they have an audit coming up or possibly now during tax season. So let me give an example of how this applies to tax season for uh, some way of uh, looking at this in your firm. If you have clients that are ready to get their taxes done in February, then they ought to be charging your standard rate that you would normally charge because you have more capacity at this point. And they are the early birds. We want to reward them. Then as we're moving into March, you don't have as much capacity any longer. We want to go ahead and do an increase or bump up to your rates that you would be charging because of the fact that you are now busier. And then when April comes and you have all those procrastinators that held off to the very last minute and they think that you ought to be getting everything done for them, working extra hours, not having any time with your family, maybe losing an hour of sleep also, and they don't really care. They just want you to get it done and for the same rate. Those people, you ought to charge a premium price and put them all on extension. So once again, that's how surge pricing can work for you and your firm is think about some things with urgency or seasonality or deadlines. They come to you in February, they get your standard price. They come to you in March, you wanna bump it up and charge more because you're busier and closer to the deadline. They come in April, charge a premium price and put them on extension. So those are the things to look at is um, how to be able to apply that. Uh, so Christian, do you mind unmuting yourself for a moment? Certainly. Oh, thank you so much. Can, can you talk a little bit about how you've uh, looked at your pricing strategy and what changes you've made or, and the difference? Um, well, first of all, looking at my time um, and, and setting it apart from the, the setting the prices apart from the time that I spend on something, because really, when you look at value, what is the value of my 35 years of construction accounting experience? Um, can that be quantified? I mean, that is not 50 bucks an hour. You know, I spent 35 years learning that. Um, but where I can provide value to my clients is understanding what they need and then giving them the information that they need from their books. So, um, you know, it's funny, you were giving me example about Susan um, recently, and it made me think of a client that I had back in the fall. It was a new client. And instead of charging and being afraid to charge $1,500 for like a multiple entity cleanup, um, I, without batting an eye, said it's going to be 6,500, you know, and, and we'll go from there. And he did not even blink. You know, he just paid it. So what would have been $1,500 was $6,700 or was $6,500. And 
I probably did less work than I would have done before. I would have gone through, probably documented everything that I was doing, wanted to provide some kind of like, I don't know, rationale for what I was charging. Mm -hmm. They don't care about that. They really don't. It's, it's more, what are you providing to them? And do they see the value in what you're doing? And when you can communicate your value, that's when you can charge higher prices. I know some people in the chat had said they were afraid to charge more. Okay, I used to charge dirt cheap prices for clients that I'd had for 10 years. Well, guess what? When I went ahead and even doubled, I doubled several of these clients that that probably wasn't even high enough. Um, unfortunately, I kept a lot of them because they they knew they'd had so much value with me in the past. But you know, my point is is that if you could earn the same amount of money and half your and have half the clients, what does that mean to you? I mean, the fact that I can work so much. I mean, it's not that I work so much less, but I do have less stress because I'm not doing a hundred little tiny minuscule clients that are paying me virtually nothing. And honestly, the more that I'm charging clients, the more they value my time. You know, when you're charging like an attorney's charging, they're going to show up on time. They're going to have what they need. They're going to give you the information you request. Um, so really, there's there's so many benefits. So, so Christian, um, one, one thing I did want to just ask also, um, I know that this is a process, so it's not like, oh, you think about doing, you implement it, and then it's smoothly done. But what difference has it made for you because you've made the change to the value pricing? Oh, my gosh. Um, well, it's allowed me to up my tennis game. <laughs> I, could join, I could join a tennis league, which, you know, it's kind of funny. But honestly, I never would have thought of taking three hours on a Monday morning to play tennis. Um, so it's allowed me to prioritize me and my family. Um, my husband works crazy hours at a dealership and, you know, so he and I don't get to spend a whole lot of time together, but the more flexible I can be with my time, because I don't feel strangled by having to do, you know, so much work for so little money and I'm not chasing money. So mm -hmm. the fact that we're, 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 you know, we're, making clients pay, you know, before we start doing something, um, it means that you're not billing them. You're not chasing the money. I'm not sitting down doing the timesheets, which I did for way too long. But, you know, what I would do is I would um, take all this time, have every entry, every line item on their, on their invoice, and then go, mm, I shouldn't charge them that much. Let me add a line that says discount. And so, and so I really negated everything that I was trying to accomplish for myself. So just the freedom of being free from that and just saying, you know, my value is what I provide, not how much time it's taking for me to do it. Um, when you can understand and internalize that for yourself, that is liberating. But I mean, Lauren, you're right. It's a process. You know, my as soon as you like try it one time with one client and you realize that you just doubled their rate or maybe you didn't double their rate, maybe you just added a hundred, two hundred dollars to their rate um, and they didn't bat an eye, they didn't walk away. You're like, why didn't I do this years ago? And, and sometimes you need <laughs> hand-holding so you don't fall off the edge of the cliff. Okay, I was going to say, <laughs> you call it hand-holding, I call it nudging, like being pushed off the edge of the cliff because sometimes that's what you need. <laughs> anyway, Christian, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Thank you for all that you do and mm -hmm. all that you've given me, Lauren. Okay, so with the first steps of value pricing, if this is something that has interested you, you haven't had results yet, but you want to start doing that, I want to give you the steps that um, it's kind of like training wheels on a bicycle before you can really get steady riding a two-wheel bicycle. So this is what I call good, better, best pricing. And what you want to do is new clients coming to you um, or new work coming to you, you want to come up with what that original fixed rate would be. And then we want to multiply it by 1.5. That is your new good rate. And I want you to enroll three people at what that new good rate is. This gives you some insight that people aren't quite as price sensitive as you think they are. After you enroll those three people, we go to tier two, which is your new better rate. 
people come to you with work, you go ahead and come up with that original fixed fee. Now we're going to multiply it by 2x. This means that you're now earning double what you originally would have charged, no additional time spent working. As a result of that, you're getting better at having those value conversations and explaining to the client about how you can help them achieve a certain outcome that is important to them. After you enroll three clients at your new better rate, we go to the top tier, which is your new best rate. And that is where you're going to have new work coming to you, come up with that original uh, flat fee, and then we want to multiply it by 3x. So as you're doing this, you've realized that you don't need as many clients to meet your revenue needs, that uh, you can take some of that uh, freed up time and either focus on advisory services, maybe business development, or possibly just get back some of that free time to be able to just take care of yourself because you deserve that. And I just want to say, after a while, with that new best rate, you want to maybe recalibrate and go through the good, better, best pricing again. So that's how you start to move away from time-based fees over towards value pricing. And the other part with value pricing, and because we're separating our fees from time, your clients don't really buy tasks, they buy outcomes, is you want to look at bundling or packaging certain services together. So that's the silver, gold, and diamond package. The silver would be the essentials, like I was showing you earlier with Rod's packages we created, where it's just the basics for the compliance part of the work. And then the gold would be where most of your clients are. And this includes maybe some other insights in order to help them make better business decisions. And so that they're getting a stronger understanding about how the financials work in their business. And then the diamond package would be for clients that have maybe multiple businesses, they have more financial complexities, they might have some real estate, they need more of an outsourced CFO level services. So you want to start separating your fees from time, which means you want to bundle things together into packages. And that is really a way to start value pricing your services also. And this applies to taxes, advisory, payroll, bookkeeping, anything can be packaged. I will guarantee you we can package anything so you can start earning more without it being connected to your time. Because think about it, when you connect your fees to time, as you gain expertise and as you add software, you get faster at it. But an hourly rate was created before uh, computers and technology existed. So it, it's not able to adapt to when you add technology because it was uh, created actually in the early 1900s. So once again, an hourly rate is archaic. It's very old. It doesn't adapt for when you add technology, which means that anytime you connect your fees to time and you increase efficiency, you get punished for that. And then the last one is really looking at having that value conversation. This is where you want to connect with your clients and have a meeting discussing your new fees and what, but you don't want it to be a pitch or anything like that. You want to have a conversation where you're understanding what they want to achieve, why this matters, how this will make a difference and educate them about how you might help them achieve that result. And then share what would be the process for moving forward and the investment in you helping them achieve that result. That is what a value conversation is. And it really focuses on you being that advisor or consultant, not about the tasks you would be doing to be able to give them the insights they need to achieve a specific outcome. And with Rihanna, uh, she is someone that was working with a wide range of clients as a generalist. She was working a lot of hours and you know, sometimes her clients had a crisis, crisis, and that would hijack her day because she would stop everything she was planning on doing to be able to help that client out. This meant that she was running back to the computer after she put the kids together. Sometimes she was doing catch up on the weekend, so she would be missing family activities and her kids' sporting events. It was just exhausting. And the time that she came to change was when she realized not just the toll was taking on her, but the toll was taking on the family. And, and that's when she realized things needed to be done differently so that she can really be involved in her family too. So what she did is she created three packages. She focused on the restaurant industry, a silver, gold, and platinum, 
and the silver was for the mom and pops. The, the gold was for restaurants that had more square footage and a larger payroll. And the platinum was for restaurants that had maybe multiple restaurants and real estate. And the, because she was focusing on restaurants, she knew about the ebbs and flows with seasonality, inventory management, turnover because of low wages. So we needed to, she wanted to be able to fix those things and her packages address those common problems that restaurant owners faced. Steve, you're muted, sweetie. What we covered was time and money, pricing secrets, and five steps to price with confidence. And and Lauren, you know, you you just shared so much, but we still have another poll question that we haven't no, gotten No, no more yet. polls. We're done. No more polls. Okay. Want to be respectful of time. Uh, so you really shared a lot, and now I think they can get started, but I think they're ready. Uh, some of them are ready, and they don't want to figure this out on their own. What do you recommend for our listeners who want to increase their income without working additional hours? First of all, I, I know that you're busy, so I so appreciate you taking time away from working in your business to join us and get that insight tips on how to be able to raise the value of services you offer and be well compensated for that difference you make for your clients to stop undercharging. So if you feel like you're ready to implement this, you are ready to really get it done this year, this is your time because you deserve to have fees that reflect the value then I put aside some time for a path to profit strategy session. You can either scan the QR code to be able to go there and let me know you want to have a meeting to discuss your business and what you want to achieve. Or you could go to businesssuccesssolution.com forward slash let's talk to get that set up. So once again, thank you so much. I appreciate you joining me today and being engaged, getting the chat all lit up. And I look forward to further conversations. Take care.